As usual on the Tuesday, Thursday call, we're gonna get started with a couple of uh, items of news you can use. Uh, the, the biggest news you can use hot off the press is that, uh, and they threatened this for years, but they finally made it official yesterday, Ginny May, which is one of the, the stable GSEs, uh, Freddie, uh, Fanny, Ginny, Ginny May has approved a 40 year conforming loan 40 year mortgage. Um, they've talked about doing this for a long time. It's designed to allow people to pay less over a longer period of time. Um, basically it's uh, the GSEs waving the white flag saying, we understand that the prices for houses have gotten out of control and we can only do so much with interest rates or the, the other side of the government can only do so much with interest rates but what we can do is we can stretch that amortization out to 40 years and that will in turn lower the payments. Now, the, the law, you guys have probably all heard of the law of unintended consequences. And this is a, a big thing that the unintended consequences here that will affect the, the overall economy. Basically what this will do is it will continue to allow prices on houses to escalate. Because before, if somebody could afford, let's say, a $1,500 payment, a uh, 40-year mortgage might drop it down to, say, $1,300 a month payment, which now the sellers of homes can raise their prices more to get it back to that $1,500 range. So the law of unintended consequences is this does the exact opposite of what I believe it was designed to do, which was to make houses more affordable. It actually makes them less affordable. Um, now that's, that's in an inclining market, you know, where the market's going up, we're, we're flattening out in some places of the country, it's actually going down. Uh, it's, it's gone from red hot to hot, which is still good. Um, and then only in certain areas, is it still red hot? And those areas are becoming fewer and far between on a, on a daily basis, but uh, be looking at the other GSEs down the road to accept this as their new metric for an insurable uh, conforming transaction. In fact, this is a fully insurable, tranchable uh, transaction. And actually let's uh, for uh, either tomorrow or maybe tomorrow and Wednesday and uh, Thursday, I wanna play that uh, too big to fail clip where they describe what happened in the 2008 meltdown because I believe this is happening uh, in the process of happening right now, based on what's going on, um, you're going to see how this will play out. It's not the same reason. It's not because the government or these other lenders were writing, as they called it, quote unquote, shitbag mortgages. It is because of this kind of stuff that they're playing around with interest rates or playing around with terms of loans and those types of things. But I think you'll see it's eerily similar to what we had going on in 2008 and nine. Um, second item on news you can use, capital gain sell-off. Okay, so here's the deal. If you ever think that your vote doesn't matter when you guys go to elect people, uh, here is a classic example. Um, the Biden administration has proposed raising capital gains taxes from 20 to 39%, basically a doubling of capital gains. At that rate, capital gains taxes would be higher than ordinary income which will absolutely discourage investments. Investors won't invest money. They won't put money into long-term assets because why? It, it's cheaper to make your money today and not have things that you hold for long periods of time because capital gains, which has always been kind of an important thing in our industry for people who buy and hold houses for a long time, would actually cost you money instead of save you money. So, but here's the thing. You've got to get, in order to get that thing passed, they've got to get through the U.S. Senate. And there is, uh, from what I'm reading, there is one guy, and this is why your vote counts, there's one person who could hold this thing up, and it's Joe Manchin with, from West Virginia. And uh, he, I think, will tend to side with the more conservative, fiscally conservative uh, Republicans, even though it's a toss-up in, in, the, in the Senate. Um, I think he would vote against this. This is at least what the indications are, and that could go down to defeat. If they win, expect a giant market sell-off. It's been about 30 years, I think, 30, 20 to 30 years, I have to check my, my dates, since there was an uh, increase in capital gains. And when that happened, 
uh, five or 10% of that market sold off at that time. And it caused a, a really big problem in the stock market and things like that. Expect that to happen again. I mean, it could be in the range of a trillion dollar sell-off, which would crash the stock market and it would have people's investments fleeing to solid hard assets um, that could be traded or sold quickly. Um, so housing could be a winner in that deal, but more importantly, if you're into it, um, cryptocurrency would be a hot thing. And that's why you've got guys like uh, Robert Kiyosaki going out and saying, listen, put your money into cryptos uh, because that is the safe haven and it's gonna be going up. And that, because that's a high frequency trade, it would be uh, taxed at only ordinary income rates, which would be below for the first time, capital gains rates. So you can see that thing coming. And then finally, third news you can use is the Biden administration announced uh, last week, a, and they signed it yesterday, a nationwide ban on evictions extension. And this is in theory through the CDC. Uh, they have one more month. So instead of something happening, I guess it's tomorrow, it's supposed to happen tomorrow would be the nationwide ban on evictions would stop. It's gonna be a one month from tomorrow. It'll be June, uh, J July 31st, uh, 2021. Uh, that's been kicked out to that point. All indications are it cannot be extended again. Um, and so, you know, we finally got a date certain that everybody agrees this is what's going to happen. Evictions will start up probably a month from now. Now, some states, as we've talked in past calls, have instituted a little bit longer. New York State is August 31, um, you know, so on and so forth. So you're going to have to check and see if your state has something that supersedes the federal government in this regard. But most states, the vast majority, starting uh, next month, July 31st or August 1st, uh, evictions, everybody's going to be running to eviction court and trying to remove these 8 to 11 million, depending on whose numbers you believe, 8 to 11 million uh, holdover tenants, people who are living in a house and not making a payment to the landlord. So uh, that's all to that come. So it's going to be a lot of interesting things coming up here uh, in July, uh, 2021. And we'll, as always, we'll kind of keep you guys up to speed, let you know what's going on. And uh, it's gonna be a wild ride, but uh, if you know where to play, you can make some money.